Welcome to church. Well, good morning. My name is Malia Tawalo, and I am a second year pastoral leadership student here at Valley Christian College. Yes, and my name is Robert Thomas. I am a third year, first year of my bachelor's Woo! pastoral leadership student here yes. at the School of the Spirit. Yes, I'm yes, all yes. the way from Bermuda. Malia's all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada. And God has brought us here from all across the world yes. to this one space to experience the presence of God. And it's through Valor Christian College that we got that experience. So if you're interested, we encourage you to go to valorcollege.edu and take a look. Yes, just as Robert said, I'm all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada, right across the uh, across the country. And I was actually supposed to move to Hawaii, but God called me here to Valor. And so there's nowhere that I'd rather be than to be in the perfect will of God. And so go ahead and register and we'll see you right in the fall. And so we just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome. If this is your first time joining us online or here on this campus, we're so excited and so glad that you get to be part of this experience with us this morning. Yes, we are so excited. Welcome to those of you in the tab. We welcome yes. you guys. Welcome to those of you guys on the line, yes, watching welcome. on Instagram, YouTube, on Facebook. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Yes. And we don't just want you watching on those platforms, but join us on our online campus. I don't yes. think a lot of people know, Malia, we have an online yes, campus do, now. It is yes. so awesome. It's a wonderful experience. Yes. And you should go take a look. Yes, you can go look. online at yes. whc.life slash online and you can get engaged to what yes. God is doing here. Yes. And to our online family, Family, we want you guys to be engaged. Yes. We want you guys to be commenting. We want you guys to be liking and sharing. And speaking of commenting, you can comment below where you are joining us from. Yes, we have people watching from all over the country and all over the world. There are people all across the U.S. There are people from Pakistan, from Africa, from the from Europe, from all over wow. the world joining wow. us at this point. And we want you guys to get engaged lock in and yes. get ready to experience a move of God. Listen, Dominion Camp yes. Meeting was just a few weeks ago and that same anointing is here in yes. this house. Sunday yes. after Sunday, the presence of God has been wrecking us and we know that it has not just been here in this tabernacle, but it has been right there all over the world where you're watching from. So we're not inviting you to watch a service. We're inviting you to be a part of yes. service today. be a part today. of the service. Yes, yeah. yes, be a part of this service. And so we have a Joe from Kentucky. We just want to say good morning and welcome, Joe. We are believing everything that you are expecting for. Our pastor here teaches us that expectancy is the breeding ground for your miracles. So keep, keep commenting, keep commenting below with what you're believing for so that way we can Attach our faith with yours and what you're believing for in this season. Yes, welcome. And listen, we want you guys to get our free gift. Our yes. pastor and the first family has a special gift for you. It's called Seven Decrees and Declarations for Families. All you have yes. to do is just put your email in the chat and click on a button and you'll be able to get this free gift from our pastor and first family. And listen, we are so excited for you joining us online. But listen, if you're in the Columbus area or in the Elkhart, Indiana, Michiana area, yeah. don't just watch online. Get here. We want to love you. We want to be here. We want to see you face to face in the house of the Lord. So come and join us. Be a part of what God is doing. Now listen, yeah. service is about to start. So if you're home watching at home, throw that coffee table to the side. Yeah. Move. If you're in the kitchen, yes. put the eggs and bacon yes. down. <laughs> Step away from the stove yes. and get ready to experience ready. the presence of God yes. because it is about to move so mightily in this place. Yes. So without further ado, service will begin in, in 90, 90 seconds. seconds.
just lift up your hands and worship the King. Amen? Here we go. The blood, I know it was the blood that saved my soul. Saved my soul. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood that made me whole. I know it was the blood. that covered me. I know it was the blood. that set.
What's it do, y'all? It washes white as Thank God for the blood. Somebody who's grateful. Your blood is still saving, still cleansing, still redeeming, still forgiving, still buying back. We come to your throne today because of the blood. Oh, we thank you. Let the redeemed say so this Sunday morning. Yay! You're joining us online. Type in, thank God for the blood. Oh! We thank you. We thank you that you loved us that much. You still love us that much today through every mistake and failure and shortcoming. You're still a good God who rewards those who diligently seek you. So let's all sing this together. Here we go. Creator, you spoke. You spoke. The stars began to shine. Began to shine. It's great news right here. You're the same. You're the same today as you were in the beginning. You remain unchanged. Come on, sing it out with us. Say, God of all power, King of all glory. Testify right here. You do wonderful things. Ah, yeah. You are God of all. You do wonderful things. You do wonderful things. You do wonderful things. Hey. Somebody testify that with your praise this morning. Oh, oh. Redeemer say, Redeemer said, You spoke, you spoke salvation at the cross. At the old rugged cross. as you say it. You're breathing life again in us. Right now again in us. You're the same today. You're the same today. As you were in the beginning. As you were in the beginning. Through it all, you remain unchanged. You remain unchanged. All together, say God of all power, King of all With us. with us and anything can happen, anything can happen. because we believe, we believe ah. you do wonderful things. all right sing it louder here we go
moves in power a miracle can happen so how do we get God to move because when he when he moves when he's at work a miracle can happen so how do we get God to move he inhabits the praises of his people you start praising God starts moving you start waving God starts moving you start clapping and God starts moving oh you start spinning because you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ you start turning and God starts turning it in your favor hey he inhabits the praises of his people when you move when you move
There's a miracle in the works. I can feel it. There's revival in the church. I believe it. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. There is no one else. You are great, for you are great. You do miracles. You do miracles. There is no one else like you. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. There is no one else. For you deserve the glory. Somebody just walk with him. Hide the We'll dig in right here. Lord, we lift our hands and worship us. We lift your holy name. You deserve, you deserve the glory. And the honor, Lord. Lord, we lift our hands and worship the Lord. Lift him, lift him, lift him, lift him, lift him. Sing out, worthy is the Lord. Oh, yeah, I feel something right there. Worthy is the Lord. You are. You are holy. You are holy. holy. Are you Lord God? Are you Lord God? Oh, my. Oh, my.
him. Okay, here we are, here we are. So, I've got, I got one book that's got 58 Jehovah names of God, I believe. And then I've got one that's got like 25, 30 right. names of Jehovah God. So that's 80, right? So, I want somebody to like, Forget that it's the Sunday before school starts. I want you to forget that it's rained every day for two weeks, except at 10 o'clock this morning from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock. So everybody decided to go enjoy that. Thirdly, I want anybody, anybody that believes you know one of the names of Jehovah God, one of the compound names of Jehovah God that describe his character, his nature, who he is, what he is, what he will do. I want you to run to this altar. I want a microphone over there. I want a microphone over here. Here we go. There's no God. That's it. it That's it. We don't even have 80 people down here. We don't even have one for every name. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Say, there's no God like Jehovah. Nobody like him. 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 Miss Diana. Jehovah Rapha on three shouted. One. Jehovah's Sid Canoe What's by it? Victorious Banner. What's it mean? My Victorious Banner. Shout Jehovah Sid Canoe. Jehovah Sid Canoe. Jehovah Shama is present. Jehovah Shama is present here. Jehovah Shama is present. Jehovah Shama is present. Is he present in Ukraine? Then shot. Jehovah Jireh, my provider on three. One, two, three. 
shalom, my peace. Hallelujah. Jehovah shalom. In the middle of rising prices, in the middle of a recession. Jehovah Rohi, he is our shepherd. Do you know what that is? Do you know what Rohi is in Hebrew? Rodney, our shepherd. My banner. Everybody get something to weigh. Get something to weigh. Get something to weigh. Jehovah, Missy, my banner of victory. 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 Say hello to Bishop David Amos. Bishop Amos and his wife and their beautiful family are moving this week. He's been on our City Harvest Network team leading up our Ohio branch. For how long you've been driving back and forth? Since September. Since September took a triple pay decrease because he knows revival is here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is a miracle man. No, you didn't hear me. He, I like just get around him and just, because miracles are all over him. Oh, just stand there. I think if I was talking about you, you want somebody to rejoice. I said, he is a miracle man. Because he serves Jehovah Jireh. Okay. So he's been with me out all last week. By the way, I don't even know why y'all need me. Because what Elder Bill Canfield did in here last Sunday morning was DCM worthy. Ah, some of you can't clap because you found out I wasn't going to be here, so you tuned out. It was so powerful yeah. that on, what was it? Then. Tuesday night, 
I watched the whole thing for the third time. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are y'all lost? Did you end up in the wrong church this morning? Because you're not acting like what's been going on around here. Come on, come on, come on. I need a shot. So he's trying to get back from Kentucky because he'd been out with me all week last week. And I'm telling you, wherever City Harvest Network or Valor Christian College are touching this nation, there is flaming, yeah. ferocious, yeah. growing, expanding, moving, So you're driving home, right? Yes, you're coming this way or that way? So you're coming here or going there? We were here yeah. in Columbus when yeah. we found out. Yeah. I was just getting ready to get on the airplane the yeah. next morning with you. No, but I don't want to oh, know oh, about okay, that. Okay. I want to know about this the, last the, This thing. last one, I was on my way back to Columbus. You, were, you had been there yes. for three hours. You're on your way back yes. Yes. to Columbus. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And, and on the way, you just minding your own business. Yes, sir. You've been in revival. Yes. Till you're dripping. Right. With the anointing. Yes, sir. The glory of God yes. all around you. Yes, yes. And what happened? I was driving along and all of a sudden a huge cargo truck just hit me at 70 miles an hour. Knocked me. We were stuck together. Once the vehicles come unstuck, I was hit again, thrown over the median, and then I was hit, I was sent into oncoming traffic. My vehicle was about to go over into the ditch where I would have flipped. Come on, somebody so now, needs to hear minute, what I'm saying. Minute, I had angels minute, on assignment minute, that were with me. No, wait a minute, so, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because you're going too fast. Okay. And they kind of slow this morning. Yes, got it. Everybody shout! Yourself up in the Lord, your God. Shout, clap, dance, move, walk, leap, run, do something. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Okay. Jesus. All right, you online, listen to this, because there's about to be a, I heard you. There's about to be a blanket of manifesting miracles between now and Wednesday night. Speak it. Speak it. Do it again. We 
with every over he shouts there's a double increase of your faith right So you're on your way back here. Yes, sir. We've been in revival all week. Yes, sir. People standing outside trying to get in. Yes, sir. People screaming. After I dismiss last Sunday night in Whittier, California. Yes, sir. The service went on for four hours and nobody yeah. left but me. I'm ready for some afterglow. Hey, 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 hey. I'm ready for folk what don't wanna go home. I'm ready for some folk not ready to get back out to hell. Okay, come up here, Blake. Come up here, Blake. Come on, buddy. Everybody say hello to Pastor Blake. <laughs> Pastor Blake was, was Bishop Amos's associate pastor and armor bearer. They've been together since elementary school. You got any friends you still friends with since elementary? This is one of the biggest servant hearts I have ever encountered. So when Bishop Amos decided to come, I said, well, you're not coming without Barney Fife. I call him Dixie. Say hello, Dixie. And can he preach? Like, woo! Kentucky folk, you understand? Ah, uh, yeah. K Kentucky folk. Yes sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They know what guys in gravy means. That's right. Come on. Yeah, and you don't put it on potatoes. No. Unless no. they fried breakfast potatoes. Let's go. So I want you to stay here because you have witnessed all this. And there's still some folk out there. You can probably pick them out. Just look around. They, they, they not really sure about all this yet. They, they wonder why it has to be so loud. Cause we can't help it and we don't want to. He got up from the grave, and we're not going in one. So here it is. Okay, so there's the highway. That's State Route 23. We Kentucky folk call it the home stretch because it runs directly to Kentucky from Columbus. Four lanes, divided highway, 152 different speed zones in a one hour drive that takes six. 
So you coming home. Yes, sir. And you're just driving alone. Yes, sir. And a truck. Bam. His car starts to swerve. The guy comes back and rams him again. I mean, this looks like something out of Fast and Furious. Yes, sir. Knocks his vehicle spinning backwards across the divided highway, spin around, heading into two lanes of oncoming traffic. Suddenly, somebody listened to me on Wednesday night. I said suddenly, suddenly, shove somebody until it makes them mad and take. Suddenly, my brother, suddenly, my sister, it's a season of suddenly. Before Wednesday, tell somebody, before Wednesday, tell them, get out of your seat and go tell somebody. Then his car went sideways down into an embankment should have rolled three or four times but comes to a peaceful Jehovah shallow nothing broken nothing missing nothing lacking peace my peace I leave with you not as the world gives. Okay, so I got it set up. Yes, sir. Then what happened? So watch this. After I got out, the police officer said, there's no way for you to be alive other than somebody other than you was driving the vehicle. Hey! Jesus! When the police officers got there, they said, come here, you got to get pictures of this. They said, because it's not possible, you see the trail, you see the marks of the tire what? where the car was going one way and suddenly turned around. I need somebody to believe for a sudden turn around this morning. Come on. He's a God of favor. He's a God. He's a God of more than enough. Glory! Shout like it was your wreck. Shout like it was your miracle. Shout like he's on his way for you. Shout like somebody is about to come up into your circumstance and say, take a look at this. So, Pastor, so Blake was a few miles behind me. He was actually on the car phone with me, heard me scream. What'd you scream? I screamed, I'm going to die. It wasn't funny then. So, so he, he, he knows I'm in trouble. And he comes running. You ought to thank God you got a church family. You got people in your life that when they hear you cry, you're not alone. This is why we got to get back to the house of God. He's got some people that are ready and willing to come running to you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want you, she's there by herself because she wouldn't let anybody miss church to be with her. Aston's in the hospital right now, and I want her out.
That fever is broke. Those chills are done. He sent his word and healed you, Miss Ashton, right now. Shout! I need any Bauer student that believes up here on the platform right now. Miss Katie, you come too. keep singing that if there's somebody in your family that needs deliverance shout Jesus right now well here it comes dear brother and sister was just an exclamation point Come on. yes sir how long ago did your mother-in-law lapse into a coma and go into the critical care unit two weeks ago two weeks ago she only how old she's in her late 60s what is she amy 66. 66. Okay. 66. 66. 66. 66 is when you get to the end of yourself and the beginning of him. I don't have any notes on this. Yes, sir. But I got mad at the anointing that was present in this place i got mad don't you dare settle for that anymore it has nothing to do Come with on. them and everything to do with us, Help us Lord. you shouldn't have to be hooked up to a ventilator spiritually every sunday morning to get you yeah. breathing that's a word i thought i heard the church shout that's a word. i said i thought the church became a choir and started singing, there's no God like Jehovah. So take me kind of through 
the last two weeks. Yes, sir. So two weeks ago, on a, on a Sunday night, we were getting ready to leave with you on a Monday morning for the ministry trip, and we got a phone call about my wife's mother, Debbie, and they said that she was completely unresponsive. They were pretty sure it was a heart attack. They sent... Hold on. Hold on. So that's their family, right? She left a 30-year position with the government, including her retirement, to come and teach your children kindergarten at Harvest Preparatory School. These are people whose hearts God touched. Yes. They weren't looking for a paycheck. Yes, sir. Are you ready? So this is her lovely mother. All right? Yes, sir. So two weeks yes, sir. ago. Yes, sir. We get a phone call. 66 years old. Go. She's unresponsive. The family's at the hospital trying to get a hold of the hospital to find out what's going on. They said, that wing's on lockdown. There's trauma. We can't tell you anything. Later, we found out her mother was the trauma, that she was dead for more than two minutes. They had to revive her to get her back. Once they got her back, they said her kidneys are shut down. Her lungs have collapsed. They told us that she had lost her eyesight. They said, we don't know if she's going to live. We'll try, but it doesn't look good. And she and will never get her eyesight said, back. said, never get her eyesight back. And so I'm supposed to leave with you. And you called my precious wife and said I wasn't going, that That's I right. need to be with my family. That's right. And, and my wife said, no, we're servants. And we serve somebody and something greater than us. And there's too much at stake. You're getting on that airplane and you're going to serve the man of God. I got to the airport and Miss Megan had taken my name off. The pilot said, you're not on the list. They didn't want me to go. But you see, if you want supernatural anointing, you've got to learn to serve when it's not convenient. That doesn't mean that you serve when your hair don't look right. It means when it hurts. It means when it's painful. You don't quit and he doesn't quit. Come on. Serving is the language of the Savior. Did you hear what he said? Say it again. Serving is the language of the Savior. Say it again. Serving is the language of the Savior. Say it. Serving is the language of the Savior. Serving is the language of the Savior. Serving is the language of the Savior. Go ahead. So we get to Texas, the first stop with you and and they have they have preserved her life but she's on the ventilator not responsive no brain activity she's not responding and so I said to my wife I said put that phone on FaceTime and let me see her because I know in the room next to me is a general of faith and the anointing that's on him is available to me because the anointing you serve is the anointing that you receive. Yeah. 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 So she put the phone. So she put the phone on FaceTime and I said, Debbie, in the name of Jesus, wake up. Wake up. And immediately you need to shout. I said suddenly her eyes opened up and she began to cry right there on the phone. It's not over. It's not over. So she woke up. And so I was only going to go on half the trip. When God woke her up, my wife said, well, you might as well finish this whole thing out. Come on, why don't you finish something? Go ahead and preach. Why don't you finish something? Go ahead and preach. Why don't all the backslidden preachers that need an education Go get back to preach, Valley Christian Bishop. College and finish that preach, degree Bishop. so you can learn some doctrine and preach something that'll make the devil tremble? Come on. So while I was serving with you, 
a mighty man of God came up to me that saw me serving you. And they said to me this, see, there's some messengers that can only get to you in the path of servanthood. And because you're not serving, you're missing the messenger that strategically had been placed to tell you something that you need to know. And so in California, this mighty man of God comes up and says to me, not knowing anything, we call that a word of knowledge. Word of knowledge. Says to me, because you are serving God's people, God's about to serve your people and your mother-in-law is going to be healed. Didn't that know anything knew, about me. That man knew absolutely nothing. Thank God for the Holy Ghost and his gifts. Loose the ghost. Do it in a heavenly language now. There's more. So wait. So there's more. So her mother was completely blind. She was in septic shock and the infection took her eyesight. A church lady, I said a church lady, that's why you ought to go to church. Come on, somebody. Thank God for every church lady that's here tonight, this morning. A church lady told me. A church lady had to, she's completely blind. No way. Okay. You missed it. He put the phone in front of her. Yes. After a week and a half of zero response. And simply said, wake up. And her eyes came open. And she was looking all around the room and talking. Wait a minute. Now then, two days later, I say, how's your mother-in-law? Well, Pastor, we're going to get another miracle. I said, okay. He said, they told us this morning she's blind and she'll never recover her sight. So after her her eyes got opened by a miracle. Yes. 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 She went blind. Yes, sir. That's when you quit. Yes, sir. That's when shallow believers would quit. That's a good word. That's when people that only want one service for an hour and 15 minutes on Sunday, cut and dried, two songs, a short offering, 40 minutes of message, and go home. That's when they quit and come over here. (laughs) She's blind my wife in the hospital a lady has to pick her up because she's crying hitting the floor my mother is blind and I said to her if he raised her from the dead seems to me he can open those eyes once again shout if he did it before he'll do it again he'll do it once more God will do it over again. Turn around, there's a miracle behind you. There's a miracle coming. Suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. You waited for years. It's coming suddenly. Go. So, she's blind. They said she's not going to get it back. But I was watching Pastor Parsley on Wednesday night from Kentucky because there's nothing better to watch than the Word of God on a Wednesday night. Amen. And I was sitting there and we had just got a phone call that not only is she blind, but now she's got a blood clot and she's starting to go backwards. We're getting no response again. And I'm watching the man of God preach and I said to my wife, About 7.30 at night, I said, my pastor taught me that sitting is not the posture of victory. It's time to get up. We're going to drive to West Virginia. I'm going to that hospital room, and I'm going to lay some holy hands on that woman tonight. (laughs) 
So we're watching the service online, driving an hour and a half to where she is in West Virginia. Because you got to fuel your faith. That's right. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I had to get something in me so something could come out of That's me. Right. Come on. So we get there and we walk in the room and she's completely lifeless. I have to get some people to come and to straighten her up on the bed. The nurses are in the room and I walked up to her body and I put a prayer cloth like this right here in her hand. And I said, Debbie, in the name of Jesus, you're healed, you're coming out of here, and you're coming to Columbus, Ohio when this is over. And immediately, suddenly, she didn't just open her eyes, she sat up and began to look around. And I said, Debbie, can you see me? And she said, I see you. Her eyesight is complete. Completely restored. If you act like that's ordinary, you'll never get a miracle. If you act like that's just ordinary, you'll never get healed. You gotta praise Him. While we pray, while we pray, while we pray, the kidney. Somebody's getting it. See, somebody's getting it right now online. Somebody in their cards getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it. I feel virtue going out of me now. did God give her her eyesight back? Not only did she sit up in the bed and begin to laugh, why don't you just go ahead and laugh at that devil? Cause you got a praise that knows how to paralyze every principality. She began to laugh and the doctors now say there was never a heart attack. The doctors now say the kidneys are fully functioning and she's coming out of the hospital this week.
Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. The last time that our nation was in a recession, the last time, I went back through the records and this church had an explosion of financial increase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It seems like whatever goes wrong out there uh -huh. gets right in here. Hallelujah. Yes. I just want to remind you in great brevity that you have dual citizenship. I'm not talking about United States and Canada, United States and Mexico, United States and Ukraine. I'm not talking about that. United States and Pakistan. I'm not talking about that. You will have dual citizenship, not in two different nations, but in two different worlds. You have citizenship in the natural world uh -huh. and you have citizenship in heaven now here's where the mistake gets made you think you'll be a citizen of heaven when you get to heaven your bible says through the hebrew writer that you have now come to the heavenly Jerusalem. The heavenly Jerusalem. You have now come to the heavenly Jerusalem. You're not going there. You are there. How do you know do you, do you know that, I'm, I'm not talking about you just believe, because in your mind that's a different thing than knowing. It's actually not, but in your natural mind you think it is. How many of you know you're going to heaven? Okay, okay. How? You, you've never been there. How many of you believe you're going to heaven because Jesus Christ, God's only begotten son, gave his life, his blood on a cross in Jerusalem? How, how many of you, like you know that? No one could convince you that Jesus did not come to the earth, born of a virgin, died on a cross, was resurrected from the dead the third day, right? You know that. No one could talk you out of that but you. Okay? So you know that, right? How? No, no, no. No. Not God's word. Okay, bring me back to that. Where's Fios? Run up here, Pastor Fios. Bishop Fios, run up here. Okay. So we have... So we have 50 churches in Pakistan now. Yes, sir. City Harvest Network churches. So you stopped me. I was, I was very busy. But you stopped me in the parking lot and you asked me a question. Do you remember the question? Yes, sir. Okay, ask this congregation the question. Does the Bible has eternal life? Sit down. Does the Bible have eternal life? I think I'll ask each of our preachers. I won't do that to you. Look, look, they're getting microphones already. You say you're going to let a preacher talk. Whoa. Oh, give, give him his microphone back. 
you ain't got enough steps in today, Gabby. Give it a, you'll stay with me. Okay, come here. So, in actuality, that was a problem in the New Testament too. Because you don't know what to say because the initial response is, well, of course. Right? But it's actually not the fact. Listen to this verse. Yeah. The John chapter 6, verse 39. And? Jesus said, you think you have a life i got to read that, sir. <laughs> Get it right, son. He was telling them, you know, you know the scriptures. And therefore you think by that knowing the scriptures, you have eternal life. Right? Yes, you got sir. it, buddy? Go. Yes. I, I, I love when I don't have to work alone. I got a lot of help around here now. Did you find it? Okay. It's John chapter 5, verse 39. 39. Yes, sir. You search the scripture for that in them you think you have eternal life, but these, they which testify of me. Right. But so it's not, it's not a knowledge of this. There's no eternal life in this. Boy, I wish I had time to preach today. You encounter the giver of eternal life through the scriptures, but you have eternal life in him and in him alone. Because there are a whole lot of folks that get radically, truly, overwhelmingly born again and become new creatures who have never known one verse of this book. And you know half of it, and some of y'all that know half of it, still not saved. I'm going. Okay, so, okay, I'm, I'm gonna work alone for a minute. All right, so. So, let me ask you a question. Who are you? Now, I'm not talking about who you think you are right now, okay? I'm, I'm taking you a little deeper. I'm just going to scratch it to satisfy myself till next Sunday. But I am going to tell you this. Who do you, just think in your own mind, don't yell out. Who, come here, and God, God's going to put another dose of healing on you. Yeah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Put your hands on your belly. Lord, yes. Take another dose. Take another dose. God healed her while I was preaching about a month ago and then I saw her this week and I could tell she was in pain and she didn't want to tell me she is in pain but I knew that and I said are you in pain she said yeah I said well okay and I started to lay hands on her and God said no just wait till you get good under the anointing and give her another dose you know sometimes you have to take medicine more than one time. It's quiet. He sent his word medicine and his medicine healed them. You have to take medicine sometimes over and over and over. Then you go back to your doctor like I did and he said, you don't need that anymore. Yeah. See, but sometimes comes suddenly. Just, you know, you're blind. In the next second, you can see everything. I didn't get any claps. You better start telling people that's the God you serve. So, you can sit down, buddy. So, uh, who are you? Let me ask it another way. When you were born, who were you? Well, the culture will tell you, you were wonderful. You were amazing. 
and that's true. From the time you are born until the age of accountability, watch me, you are covered by the grace of God. Meaning if a child would pass away, as 66 million have done in America, thanks to Roe versus Wade, and those of you too cowardly to stand up and shout because it's overturned and we've stopped murdering. You see that? You see that? So, so they're innocent, right? They're, they're innocent. But on the inside of them, there's something that is far from innocent. And when they become to the age of accountability, meaning they understand right from wrong, so there's no, there's no age, okay, at that point, right? But any parent knows when their child reaches that age. Here's how you can know. That sweet little thing lied to you. And you didn't teach it to lie. I hope you didn't. It will throw anger fits, roll around on the grocery store floor screaming, I want a lollipop, because it's selfish. It's self-interested. And when you attempt to correct it, it will rebel. Now, the child has reached the age of accountability. That's why God said, at one time, I winked at ignorance, but now I command all men to, watch the word, repent. So here's my question. Here's my question. What is the only sin that did not involve your self-will. Watch. The only one. There's only one. There's only one sin that is not your, quote, fault. Okay? Here it is. Psalm 51.5. Put it up there. Psalm 51.5 explains what I'm talking about and tells you who you were. I was brought forth, I was born in iniquity. God doesn't save you only from your sins. He saves you in your sin. Because if you are not in your sin, you would not have sinned. 90% of modern Christians have no earthly idea what I'm talking about, and it is the paramount truth of the entire New Testament. I was brought forth in what? Iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. That didn't mean she committed adultery. That's what I was talking about. It's talking about the bloodline of every single human person ever born of a woman. There are two genders, XX, XY. That's it. 
I'm not going to call a man a woman because she's, he, whatever, is on some mind trip. You were born male and female. And men do not have babies. Women that want to identify, it don't matter to me what you identify. As long as you don't force something that's in your head upon me that I know is not true. That's all. This goes to the very core of Christianity. This is not a cultural issue. This is a Bible issue. Uh -huh. Mary was a woman. Not a guy that identified or the world would have been short of Savior. Okay. Okay. Excuse me while I just make common sense. Okay. So child is born as by one man's sin. Sin entered the world and death by sin. You know how I know everybody sins? Everybody dies. Death by sin. Branded on the forehead of every sin. Murderer. The soul that sinneth, it shall. So, here's what people do not understand. You, let me, let me look right here so you all can tweet this. You are not a sinner because you sinned. You're not a sinner because you committed adultery. You're not a sinner because you uh, steal. You're not a sinner because you lie. You're not a sinner because you cheat. You're not a sinner because you rob. You're not a sinner because you lost your temper. You're not a sinner because you're angry. You're not a sinner because what else? Huh? You commit some kind of sexual immorality. That's not why you're a sinner. You are not a sinner because you sinned you sin because you are a sinner. You so vain, you probably think this song is about you. <laughs> I've had people come up to me, Elder Canfield, and say, I know you were talking about me Sunday. Well, I wasn't talking about you, I may have been talking to you. It's the Holy Ghost talking about you. So here's what happens. The natural world time. Just tell me. The natural world attempts to fix a spiritual problem by natural means, including the church. They do this attempting to resolve the sin problem. Attempting to resolve the sin problem by natural means. What you, if you're under the age of 50, 
were solidly trained in every day of public school is you need a better self-image. So like we make up genders, we make up that you're great. You're not great. If Bobby strikes out every single time he gets up to the little league plate, get him some help and somebody show him what he's doing wrong fundamentally instead of telling him and giving him a trophy because he walked up there and got embarrassed. Stop. Stop. You're not all that and a bag of chips. You're just not. And until you realize that and realize why you're not, and that's why I salute you, it's not as a result of your lack of effort. It's not, it's not a result of that. It's a result of poor preaching and poor teaching and you not studying to show yourself approved and blaming it all on the preacher. The preacher is not responsible for your spiritual life. At some point, you've got to come to the realization, wait, this thing's not working. I am tired of being tormented. What did Paul say? Those things which I would not do, I do. Those things which I do, I would not. There is a fight going on on the inside of me. So they will tell you that you're cool. You know, you just got a few flaws. Which we, with the aid of the elitists, can fix. We can fix you. The government is going to fix recession by spending trillions of dollars. We're going to save the planet which doesn't need saved. It belongs to him. It'll burn up with a fervent heat when he says for it to and not before. We should be responsible, of course. What we should not be is intellectually dishonest. <laughs> Buy an electric car. The planet will be healed. They think you are dull enough to believe that. We will not drill for oil. We are going to save the planet. Saudi Arabia, will you don't drill us some more oil? They not on the planet? Iran not on the planet. Russia not on the planet. India not on the planet. China, who pollutes more than every other nation on earth combined, is not on the planet. And you think making me try to suck a milkshake through a collapsing paper straw that tastes like dirt is going to save the planet when you put my drink in a plastic cup? Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Where are 82% of the batteries that go in electric cars, where are they manufactured? You don't know that, but you feel guilty because you don't have one. They don't feel guilty. Every single one of them flies around in a private jet. Which the rest of your life, you will not pollute as much with your car as they do in one trip to London and back. So you have the elites, the intellectual, telling you they can fix everything from the planet to your psyche, to your emotions, and they can't fix anything. 
They, they just can't. Any more than you can stop sinning. You can't. On your own. But what you've got to understand is though I'm not preaching eternal security, that once you're saved, you're always saved and nothing that you do matters. I'm not preaching that. But I'm also not preaching eternal insecurity. What does that mean? That you repent every Sunday. Now, here's when you can stop repenting. When you stop sinning. The good news that I'm bringing to you is you can't. That's why you're trying and failing. Only God can do that. Here's what you have to understand. There's a bad apple tree on the inside of you. And nobody ever told you that. So you don't realize it. And you trying to spray, you know, apple spray in the public bathroom. It does not smell like apples. It smells like something else with apple spray on it. And that's what our lives do. That's right. I'm just talking. I, I feel so desperately hurt for people who are just in a constant cycle of sin. It's another reason you're not on fire. It, 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 you, now, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting on you. I'm talking to you. I'm telling you there's a better way. Yeah. If it takes everything that we can do under the anointing of God to get you to raise a hand, to get you to get that frown off your face, mad at the world, always got an opinion, would you notice Everybody in the world has a nose and an opinion. And most of them are not that attractive. Sometimes you might want to keep your opinion to yourself. Your nose, you might be able to have that fixed, but your opinion, you can fix that. Are you with me? Here's the thing. The elites want you poor knuckle-dragging Neanderthals. You original gangster deplorables dying dead diseased. That's all of us. That's every man, every woman that has ever been born on this earth. And that's the reason he came. For as by one man sin, now what he's talking about there is something called, get this, okay? Because as I said, I'm going to walk a little deeper with you. Original sin or the sin nature or the programmed desire to sin. That's who you are. When you're born, that's who you are. Now the Bible gets even stronger. It uses a big word that most people can't define. Enmity. Do you know that your Bible says that God loathes? That's, that's not a modern vernacular term either, is it? Loathes, despises. Sinners? God despises sinners. Your Bible also says he's angry with the sinner all day, every day. I, I don't hear that coming from the God is love pulpits. And that's why nobody gets truly saved. 
because they don't know that they need saved from anything. Watch, watch. So original sin, you want me to give you a definition? Do you have time? Okay, quickly, quickly, give it to me. No, it's not up. You want me to find it? Original sin. See, right there it is. Number one. I'm, I'm just waiting. We have it or we don't. Everybody give them a hand for having it. <laughs> It is the nature of man's sinful condition because of Adam's fall. That's why I said, it's not your fault. Every child born into this earth will become an active, what you think of, sinner. No one will have to teach them. And you can't school it out of them. They get crazier. You've seen the documentary on, you probably haven't, but there's a documentary on Woodstock 99, which was worse than the original Woodstock. They did not understand why when the concert was over, with people literally on stage with nothing on performing that all the people took their clothes off. Then they couldn't understand that the people began to tear down the stage and set fires in the middle of 200,000 people. They didn't understand why people turned over the porta johns and then went sliding through the mud and the mess. And the commentators said, we've never seen anything like this. They're behaving like animals. They are. They are. Don't blame them, they can't help it. They're just being their original selves. That's what's inside. Lust and perversion and madness, anger and hostility and hatred, bigotry and racism, it's all in there. It's your nature. Brother well, Samuel used to say, one of the funniest things to ever hear people say is to say, I don't know why I did that. That's just not like me. When everybody knew, that's exactly like you. You think you're the only one that it's not exactly like you? Here's what I'm trying to tell you. We are born corrupted. And if you can't admit that, you'll never be uncorrupted. That's what the cross was all about. The holy became unholy so that the holy, the unholy could become through him holy. We all enter the world guilty before God because of the Adamic, the Adamite nature that's in us. That's why God tells us, go out there and reach these powerless, in pain, can't get free from themselves people. You have an anti-God nature. You are without God and without hope in the world except for the redeeming, saving grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where? 
your Bible says God reaches down on the inside of you and takes out that nature and puts in you a new nature so that the things you loved you don't love anymore and the things you used to hate you love and the things you didn't want to do now you can't help but do that's why if you don't have a passion for your word if you don't have a passion for the bible if you don't have a passion to lose a few pounds by shouting something needs dealt with if you never shed a tear Something needs dealt with. I'm not criticizing you. I'm offering you a way out. That's a miserable way to live, to try to be better and can't. To try to act righteously and can't. And the only thing that can save you is number one, recognizing that that really is your condition. You may be a deacon, an elder, a bishop, a potentate. I don't know what you may be. But if you're living trying to be better, I don't mean trying to grow in the Lord. I'm not talking, just trying to be better. I mean, there's some stuff. Paul said, when I was a child, I lived like a child. But when I became an adult, I put away kid stuff. No passion, no hunger, no desire, no prayer life, no studying of God's word, studying it, eating it, living it, loving it, telling it. Oh, I'm full of the Holy Ghost because I speak in tongues. That has nothing to do with it. You're full of the Holy Ghost when you witness your faith by accident more than on purpose. Amen. Amen. There's something in there that never got dealt with. And until it is, you'll never see victory. You'll be frustrated. That's the reason so-called Christians are so grumpy. You ever notice that? Just grumpy, always complaining about something live to complain you know why miserable they're miserable they'd have been happier if they'd have just stayed in the world then try to be in the kingdom that God said there's only one way realizing that you're dead without him you can only put so much polish You can only paint a rusted car so many times. The rust always comes back through. And God wants to take that entire nature out of you. Hallelujah. I've had preachers say to me, and then I'll close. I've had preachers say to me, you know, I've never seen anybody preach as hard as you. And, and I did it, you know, 120, 130, whatever, nights a year on the road here, five times a week, daily television, usually in four or five different states every week. And I said, one of them stopped me. National ministry, I was pre preaching a, a great camp meeting, 20,000 people there. And I preached that night, and another preacher stopped me in the lobby. And he said, now, I, I watch you preach all the time. You mean to tell me that right now when you can barely stand up, you barely know where you are, that when you get in that room upstairs, you're never tempted to turn on that TV to those adult channels? You're never tempted to get in there and, you know, take four or five shots of whiskey so you sleep better. This is a preacher. Now, obviously, he wasn't saved, 
but he was a preacher. Because if you're saved, you have the response I had. I don't have any more desire to do that than I do to go out and get some gasoline out of the car and drink it. I just, it's not, I just don't have that. I don't, I don't have that. I had another preacher say, you have the most beautiful wife, but you mean to tell me that you and her were pure for seven years before you got married? I don't believe you. Well, you don't believe me because you're not saved. I don't, no, you, please understand me. I'm just, I'm just talking about being saved. Yes. Yes. There's just stuff yeah. that is not an issue. It's not an issue. And if you're having issues like that, you didn't get the real thing. Little children, these things I write to you that you sin not. Now, if you do sin, like that's the crazy weird thing. If you ever would sin, you know, don't sweat it because we have an advocate with the Father. But you have to be saved for that to apply. Because it also says, he that habitually sins is not born of God. And that's why you habitually sin. You're not a sinner because you sin. You sin because you're a sinner. And the way to do away with that is to recognize you're lost without it. No matter how hard you try, you will never get it right. But if you will fully surrender, one translation said, he lifts you out of the miry clay at a dead lift. Wait a minute. Come up here, Bishop, right quick, and I'm going to let him go home. Lay down on, on there on your back. Lay down on, on your back. Here's the difference. Okay. Now, give me your hand. Nope. Lay it down. Now. Now. Okay. Help, help me get you up. Thank you. Come on. Come on. That's how we think it's done. Lay down. Act like you're paralyzed. Okay, get up. Okay, no, wait, I'm going to help you. Okay, I, I got your arm. Okay, go ahead, get up. Come on, man, you're going to have to help me. No, no, no. You can't help you. Only God at a dead lift can just touch you and raise you up. Just, just raise you up. Take that heart out of you. Put a new heart in you. Make you a new creature. Not somebody trying to do, but a new Get on your feet and shout hallelujah. You may be seated. Now, if that message in its brevity was worth anything to you, wait till you see what's coming. Amen. Actual sin are sins you commit or sins that you should do something and you don't do it. That's actual sin. That's not what's dealt with at salvation. What's dealt with at salvation is the sin nature, the tendency, the desire to sin that is in your flesh, in your mind, in your emotions. That's where it lives. But God puts his spirit in you. And things that used to just drive you buggy, you just walk right through and don't even smell like smoke. That's his power. To those he gave the power, he gave the power to become the sons and daughters of God. 
he has to give you that power. Blessed be God forever. So if you learned anything, get out some money. It's time for our tithes and our offerings to bless the Lord. We hope that you'll give something a little extra. 37 of my dear friends in Eastern Kentucky, the areas where I was raised in Eastern Kentucky, Kermit, West Virginia, Warfield, Kentucky, lovely Kentucky, Inez, Kentucky, beauty, Kentucky. Uh, you don't have to show the pictures. Just where Bridge of Hope is down there with thousands and thousands of pounds of relief and we didn't raise any money for it. So if you can help us with that effort, if you could throw in an extra $5 or $10 today, we'd sure love to pay for that and uh, help me get it down to the people that I love. And because I love them, you love them too. Uh, it is the worst flood in history. There's never been a, a flood recorded with this amount of damage in that region of the country. And those are folks that don't have a lot. And, and they just don't have much. And uh, we really, really want to help them. So we can do that. If you will help us, all the information is there. 1,300 people had to be rescued by boat or helicopter. As I said, 37 are, uh, are, are already lost their lives. They, they know that the death toll will raise much higher because there are many, many entire towns that they can't even get into. They, they just can't get there. And um, anyway, so Father, bless us today to respond, first of all, in obedience to your word with our tithe. And then, Lord, to give an offering today for those that are suffering so much in eastern Kentucky. We want to bless them. We want to help them. And we will, in Jesus' name. Amen. Give us unto the Lord. The ushers will wait upon you. Those of you online, all the information's right there that you need. Wow, what a move of God we had. Thank you, yes, Pastor sir. Chris, for helping us. Thank you, Bishop Amos, for helping us and all you others. We appreciate it so much. I want to give you an opportunity to sow because this is not a, you know, well, something to skip over. This is our worship that, that we freely receive, freely we give, and uh, obey God's word. There is something coming up that I want to share with you. It is so cool. And as you leave or exit the tabernacles today, uh, we will have these. There we go. Uh, those of you online, we bless you. We'll leave the information up for you. And I'll see you Wednesday night in a brand new series. And it is powerful. So we love you. Those of you here, uh, men, all the World men. Harvest Church. This, I believe, from Pastor Rod Parsley. What a powerful message. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer with Pastor Rod and you committed your life to Jesus, we need to know about it. So go ahead, reach out with the information on your screen, and one of our team is standing by to chat with you and get you some resources right away. So we also want you to realize that Pastor Rod is on every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and so we'd love for you to join us every Wednesday at 7. And then finally, you can give safely and securely right here online. After this closing, there will be an animation. It'll give you all the directions on how to do that. Hey, listen, that is it for this week at the Harv. We are so, so excited that you joined us, and we will see you again next week. Sowing into the mighty kingdom of God has never been easier or more secure than with smart giving. Any smartphone will work. To use your smart giving, open your text messaging app and send a text to the number 45777. In the message of your text, type the amount of your gift, space WHC. If it's your first time using Smart Giving, 
you'll receive a secure link to set up your account. Select your home campus and enter your giving method and where you would like your giving receipt sent. If you're already registered, the process is the same. Just send a text message to 45777, type the amount of your gift, space WHC, and you'll receive your receipt immediately. Now, if you'd prefer, you can also sow online at whc.life or by phone or by mail. Just call the number on your screen or send your gift to the address. You are good. 